LinkedIn to Salesforce integration. I'm gonna be walking you through how these two systems sync together, how these records are matched, as well as give you an in-depth look at how you can view LinkedIn data within your Salesforce, including the always wanted activity right back. Essentially how you can show the in-mail and messages sent on LinkedIn on Salesforce records. By the end of this, I'll share a few limitations as well as the best practices that I see as well as what LinkedIn suggests as best practices on when to use this integration. Let's get to it. Before we talk about the sync between these two systems, I highly recommend you go take a look at the LinkedIn Sales Navigator App Exchange package that will give you a lot of the more details on what this sync wants to surface for you. It's important to note that for this sync to even work, you do need to have certain additions of Salesforce. For example, Salesforce Essentials will not work and Salesforce Professional will not work if you do not have the API access add-on. And that is how LinkedIn and Salesforce chat. They have an API connection and LinkedIn looks to pull records from Salesforce every 12 hours and it tries to look at newly created records that may also live within LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn wants to store this information to try and become a helpful strategist on how you're connecting and maybe suggested LinkedIn profiles that you may want to look at. LinkedIn has these features where it can look at suggested leads that you may want to take a look at. It has other features where you can actually request from your LinkedIn rep certain ROI reports to know which of your users are using LinkedIn better, what types of leads you're going after, etc. Now, important to note that not only Salesforce, you need certain additions, but on the LinkedIn side, unfortunately, if you're just a power user, if you have sales in link, if you have LinkedIn Sales Navigator, what you need to have is either have a sales in linked navigator plus edition or have a, a LinkedIn sales navigator team edition, which is what I often see. It requires to have a team license where if you already have LinkedIn sales navigator, you should be fine. Your org can add you as a member or if you're an admin, you need to make sure that you have your sales reps and add them to your team. Now, if you are looking to take all of that data out of LinkedIn, let's say that you no longer want to use the tool, you don't want LinkedIn to have this information, you can request that they remove and export all of that data out of LinkedIn uh, once you break connection with Salesforce. This is obviously recommended when you're looking to make a permanent break of that sync. As I mentioned, LinkedIn wants to store this information because it tries to get intelligent with the data that you're looking for, data that you're looking to match for. Now regarding the matching process, I'm often asked how does LinkedIn know that a certain profile in LinkedIn is a record in Salesforce? Now LinkedIn has already published what they look at to match records. For example, on individual accounts, on a person's account, it's looking at the first name, last name, title, company, country, as well as the mobile phone and email. Now I'll be honest, this is not a perfect match and it's not due to faults of LinkedIn, but oftentimes, for example, you may have your LinkedIn profile matched to your personal account, whereas your work account or your work email address may be different. That's why LinkedIn is also looking at other items, other data points, such as name, company, et cetera. Now what's unique about LinkedIn is that you're able to see within LinkedIn if a record or if a profile on LinkedIn is a Salesforce record, it'll have that CRM badge that's visible in LinkedIn. And that what's really great on this is that you're able to see very easily if this is already a part of your Salesforce database. Now on the matching items, what's great is that you're able to tell LinkedIn whether or not this is a, C a Salesforce match or not a Salesforce match. Now the best place to do this is gonna be within Salesforce, within that custom LinkedIn component or widget. You can actually have this live on a lead, contact, or account record. So right from the contact record, you can see a LinkedIn, what, what profile LinkedIn is looking to match it to, and you can either request that you change that matching, whether it's an incorrect matching or they've changed companies, or you can look to manually establish a match 
by searching LinkedIn within Salesforce. Now this is a great efficiency gain, just allows you to know from a high level when without leaving Salesforce, whether you have that matched account and whether it's accurate or not. And, Salesforce, and LinkedIn has said that as you look to update these matches or provide proper matching, LinkedIn is gathering that data and trying to help you understand those matches and really fix their algorithm and improve their algorithm on how they match. This widget is comes a part of that uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator App Exchange package that I mentioned. Very easy to configure. It'll uh, require that your users obviously log into LinkedIn from Salesforce to be able to match those accounts. In reviewing the LinkedIn profile from the Salesforce component or widget, these matches will show for all users in Salesforce, not just the user that did the match or corrected the match. This is open to all. Now the additional info in Salesforce that you can see from LinkedIn outside of this component or widget that we've discussed is the activity right back. And by that, I mean that LinkedIn will be able to push your calls, your in-mail or your messages into its matched record in Salesforce. Now this is highly requested as you have a lot of orgs that are very heavy on social selling. They want these conversations happening on LinkedIn to be surfaced in Salesforce. This is something that is now comes out of the box in this integration. It is deep by default, it is on for all users. Now how this works is as you're in LinkedIn and you're looking to send an email or a message, you'll notice at the bottom of the actual message itself, it'll have two options. It'll either have that you connect to the CRM as you may be currently logged out of Salesforce, or you'll see a little checkbox that by default will be marked to log to the CRM which again means that it's going to log this message into Salesforce. If you're looking to set this up today, it's important to note that all of your historical conversations in LinkedIn will pull from LinkedIn into Salesforce for all in-mail and messages back to June 23rd, 2021. So you'll be able to see all of that historically. Phone calls that are logged from LinkedIn to Salesforce are only able to be logged if it is an in-app initiated phone call. Nothing else will link in terms of phone calls from LinkedIn to Salesforce. Now how this information comes, whether it's a call, a message, or an email, that will be created as a task on the associated record in Salesforce. So a task will be created and those are created instantly. As opposed to how the overall sync of accounts and contacts and leads, LinkedIn or Salesforce does that poll and LinkedIn does that poll every 12 hours, the activity write back is immediate. These are logged as tasks, and the creator of these tasks is the owner of the message in LinkedIn. So if your rep was sending that message, he, will, he or she will be shown as the created user in, on the task. Now notes can also be passed from LinkedIn to Salesforce. Those will be shown on the, that related list for the notes and attachments. But this is how the activity right back works. Again, very important, particularly if you have that strong social selling strategy or if you have sequences or cadences that have LinkedIn steps, a part of the activity right back will allow those, those in-mail, those messages, those calls to be shown in Salesforce as tasks. Now, just a few limitations of this integration. Uh, LinkedIn and Salesforce are only able to match on one record. So if you have, for example, intentional duplicates, whether it's leads or contacts, LinkedIn is going to match on the best possible record in Salesforce and only on one record. And then the last limitation here is that the activity write back is on by default for all users. And so individual users will need to, if they'd like, will need to turn off the activity write back. Something that's often inquired on this same integration is to talk about the LinkedIn lead gen forms. Now LinkedIn themselves have said that the LinkedIn lead gen forms is not a part of this integration with Salesforce out of the box and a Zapier or Workado integration will often help to get those response forms, whether it's that lead gen form, uh, whether it's a survey response that 
lives you know as an ad on linkedin and doesn't bring them to your website it stays within linkedin it's that linkedin lead gen form and so that's going to be done outside of third that's going to be done with a, a third party workado or zapier and is very simple to set up as well to talk through a few of the best use cases here i've used this i've set this up as an admin for several orgs i've also used this myself and really the the ability to have those those in mail and those messages come into salesforce is amazing as well as that that component that widget that lives within salesforce you're able to see all of this information within salesforce get the context whether it is an individual or it is an account now obviously best case here is that you're already using linkedin heavily you already have that strong social selling strategy you already have resources and training on how to use LinkedIn. I'll always say that this tool or this integration, whether it's LinkedIn to Salesforce or anything else, does not solve problems. Tools and integrations simply propel your strategy forward. So in this case, if you're already having that success, social selling, this will only make it easier for your team not only to have the flexibility to see LinkedIn information within Salesforce, but also allow LinkedIn to start working for you from a data perspective, as they'll be able to recognize what types of records are matching and be able to suggest others that your team may need to go after as well. Hope this has been helpful for you to understand what is included in the LinkedIn to Salesforce integration. I'll include lots of resources and links below, as well as I'll have a video coming up on how to actually set up the integration itself, but thought it's important to, for everyone to know what is part of this integration before you go try and connect the dots here. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if you have any other questions and I'll see you next time. Thanks.